Welcome to Alphanumeric, Non-Binary Review's podcast of fiction and poetry. Today, Blanca Nieves by Roy Guzman. Stepmothers expect the Electra Complex to dethrone them, but never Blanca Nieves's. She produced for herself a mechanical penis, paraded it in front of the Bundespolizei, suctioned out the eyes of the envious men with her limbs of a Vishnu, circumcised the chaos of the townswomen's vaginas with a mass-produced mandible. My queen, you are the baddest bitch, her possessed mirror professed to her every time she opened the fridge for comfort. She would rap with the agility of an M&M, wordplay like a Nicki Minaj, and fall asleep as Kanye sleeps after a concert. Putting a tentacle of her gear inside her mouth, she remembered to recharge the batteries of her auto-tuned menstruation for traditionalism. You won't be in top form in a few years, the mirror said one day after Blanca Nieves's stepmother came back from a Beyonce concert. Buy out more Republicans to support your stem cell cosmetic care. Get a vaginoplasty or kill Blanca Nieves. Use Florida's stand your ground law in your defense. The queen crushed a few Xanax, made an appointment with her chiropractor that week, hired a private investigator to make a list of Blanca Nieves' favorite clubs, the overpriced stores where she likes spending the king's moolah. She gave orders to kidnap the man Blanca Nieves hired for her private Brazilian waxes. When one of the queen's guardsmen texted Blanca that mafiosi were on their way, she ran into a Louis Vuitton boutique at the mall, escaped into a back alley, and there she met seven Central Americans who were on their 30-minute lunch break from the kitchen, where they made a living with papers chuecos. They dressed her up as one of theirs, fed her tostones and arroz con obichuelas. Blanca Nieves' looks, at least momentarily, vanished behind sweat she collected from the overtime hours in which she swept the entire restaurant, threw out endless bags of trash, did stacks of dishes, and supplemented her income as a nanny. She drank rum and coke with the seven men, who were at least a foot shorter than her. The men often fought over whom would pop her guerita cherry first, but often they fell asleep on the phone between calls to their families across the border, a pile of calling cards collected to make Blanca Nieves' bed in the only bedroom they had. All the Latinos slept in the living room, and Blanca found herself having to pay for a gym membership to take her showers, since her friends also fought over turns to use the bathroom. The queen discovered Blanca Nieves was still alive, unlike the lie she'd been told in which Blanca ran in front of a pickup in Miami. She considered wearing the robotic penis costume as she planned her visitation, but she knew she couldn't make it too obvious. Instead, she dressed up as a Jehovah's Witness, trained on humility with a theater coach, and studied the scriptures online. Blanca Nieves' roommates were at work when she heard a knock on the door, but since she'd been trained to be their spokesperson in case La Migra showed up, she hastened to open the door, her perfect English putting to rest any signs they'd all gone into hiding. The queen told Blanca she was bringing the Lord's word. B failed to recognize her. She offered Blanca a few pamphlets she stole from a preacher outside a supermarket. And Blanca felt so guilty for running away from home, she started to sob on the queen's recently dry-cleaned suit. And they both turned to the TV to watch a Spanish courtroom show. Surprised with Blanca's newly honed cooking skills, which Blanca confirmed with her microwave potage, the queen asked to use the restroom. She needed to check that her suit wasn't ruined or her flawless skin subverted under her makeup. She summoned the voice from the bathroom mirror, who then played a vine of how Blanca Nieves' future would play out perfectly, like a Reese Witherspoon romantic flick, but with Kristen Stewart playing the lead role, sending the queen on a diatribe, only overpowered by Blanca Nieves' shriek in the living room. When the queen reached Blanca Nieves, Blanca had fainted over a page discussing in detail the 144,000 that shall be saved. If there was a subject Blanca was exaggeratedly terrible at, it was math. Because it sounded like a big number, she couldn't contain the emotional baggage she'd been posting up to that point on Facebook. The queen was terrible at checking other people's pulses, so she walked away to avoid being bothered, 
assuming Blanca Nieves dead from an infarction. Apples don't make it to this part of the story. They're overpriced. And princes won't show up to the hood unless there's game to pick up or drop off, or a bag of weed to secure. As soon as the Magnificent Seven found Blanca seemingly without a pulse on the hard floor, they called a brujera to revive her. The brujera said that Blanca Nieves had suffered a concussion and that a trip to the state hospital would suffice. Blanca Nieves recuperated, but the queen never recovered from the lawsuits that came after her for impersonating a Jehovah's Witness or for refusing to pay the private detectives for their services. At the hearing, Blanca Nieves brought charges against the queen for emotional distress and was paid a large sum. She used the money to pay an attorney to procure her seven friends' green cards. All this time, Blanca had picked up Spanish and a few criollo recipes. She used her charm to establish her own restaurant chain. The voodoo mirror remained with Blanca for many years to come, giving her advice on the use of anti-aging creams, poor pronunciation, or warning her when a new wannabe rapper was in town to take away her crown, which Blanca defended like a merciless Shiva of the flip mode squad, or Gwen Stefani, but with longer hair extensions and less appropriation. Seven agents by her side to protect her from all the copyright lawsuits that would soon head her way. This has been Blanca Nieves by Roy Guzman, read for you by Lisa Quintana. Our music was Four Minutes of Memories by Artem Chunyev, provided by pixabay.com. Alphanumeric is mixed and mastered by Lisa Quintana. You can get non-binary review on our website, zoeticpress.com, or on Amazon. If you like the podcast, please drop in and give us a rating or review, and please subscribe. Non-binary review, because humans are hardwired to tell stories. <laughs>